is text boxes in our programs. And those text boxes have a text property that serves as a container. It contains a string. An example here, I put in South Mountain Community College as the text of this text box. And we can actually write code in a button that would change the text that is displayed in that text box by changing the text property. So its value can change. But sometimes we want to hold values or place them in containers that aren't necessarily visible. We want to put them into random access memory. Now you remember from your CIS 105 course that what's in memory and what the computer understands is strictly ones and zeros. But we can set aside a piece of memory and, and use that as a container and we would refer to that container as a variable. Now while it's ones and zeros in terms of programming we're not going to think in terms of those ones and zeros we're going to think in terms of the contents that those ones and zeros represent. So in this case they might represent the phrase South Mountain Community College. I can set aside some RAM address to hold a value and then I can assign a value to that RAM address such as South Mountain Community College. And later if I want to retrieve that all I need to know is the address and I can get that value back. And those addresses are a sequence of numbers but working with those numbers is pretty difficult. There's no way we could remember off the top of our head what those numbers are and the chances of making a mistake using those numbers and transposing the numbers is probably pretty high. So in programming we assign a name to an address in memory and that name is what we call the variable. So we can set aside a RAM address to hold a value and name that address for example campus. And then I can assign the phrase South Mountain Community College to that RAM address that is known as campus. And if I want to get that value back later all I have to do is refer to the campus variable name and I can retrieve that value. Let me give you an example of how it's easier to work with names than addresses. I'd like you to think of three friends whom you know where they live. You know how to get to their house. Go ahead and pause the video and write their names down on a piece of paper. Now without looking them up, write down their addresses next to their names. And if you're like me, you probably couldn't do it. Because I know how to get to somebody's house, I know where somebody lives, but I don't necessarily know what their street address is. And let's face it, it's much easier to say to a mutual friend, I'll meet you at Joe's house, rather than let's meet at 1284 North Elm Street. If you said to your friend, let's meet at 1284 North Elm Street, he might have to use his GPS to get there. But if you just said, let's meet at Joe's house, he would know right away how to get there. So back to our pseudocode. We want to set aside a RAM address and give it a name, a meaningful name, and then assign some value to that name that we can later retrieve by knowing the name of the variable. If we were to write this in VB code, Visual Basic code, the statement to assign a piece of, of RAM is called DIM. And so my statement would be DIM, which stands for dimension, campus as string. Campus is my variable name. String is a data type. And I'm telling VB in this statement, set aside a piece of memory, name a campus, and it's going to contain a string value, an alphanumeric character value or set of characters. And then to assign a value to that string, we can say campus equals, and I'm going to assign it a literal string of South Mountain Community College, which I put in quotes. And by putting in a quote, the compiler understands that that is a literal string and doesn't try to decipher what that means. And if I later wanted to retrieve that value, I can simply refer to it by the variable name. So my next line there of txt campus.txt equals campus, if that statement was executed, it would place the phrase South Mountain Community College in the text box named txt campus as the text property. So we give variable names to make it easier to use. There are some conventions in terms of working with names, and they should start with an alpha character. Usually it's lowercase. 
They may contain numbers and other alpha characters and underscores. And you should use camel casing. In getting meaningful names, you may have several words together and we can't put spaces in, so simply capitalize the first letter of each subsequent word. Now here's the example of how to do this in C sharp. My declaration statement of setting aside that that variable in memory is simply the data type, which is string in this case, and the name of the variable, followed by a semicolon. To assign the value to that variable, same as in DB, with the exception, it ends with a semicolon. And then to assign that value to someplace else or to use that value, we simply refer to it. And so txt campus.txt equals campus, and oops, looks like I left off my semicolon in this example. It should have a semicolon after it in C sharp. So the declaration statement sets aside a location of memory of a specific size and gives it a meaningful name. So again, just to review in Visual Basic, it's the keyword dim, followed by the variable name as some data type. And in C sharp, it simply is a data type and then the name of the variable, followed by a semicolon. And you see some examples there. We can dim campus as a string. We can dim pay grade as integer. Integer is a whole number, like 1, 12, 200. And we can dim my house payment as single, which would be a number with a decimal point. On the C-sharp side, it's basically the same thing, except rather than integer, we use int as an abbreviation. And then instead of single, we call it float. Let me give you an analogy of data types and how data types are used. If you were to walk into the United States Post Office, you would see rows of post office boxes. But you would probably notice there are different size boxes. And you can rent a box based on what your needs are and what you anticipate getting or having stored in that box. So if you're only anticipating business letters and personal letters, you'd probably rent a small box such as those depicted here in this illustration, boxes 126 through 131. But if you're expecting larger envelopes, such as manila envelopes, and you wanted, or maybe magazines, you'd probably rent a larger box, such as those depicted here by boxes 132 through 137. And if you're expecting some packages, well, you might need a much larger box, either 138, 139, or 140. And the larger boxes obviously cost more than the smaller boxes. So if we were going to just be expecting business letters, we probably wouldn't want to pay the extra amount for box 140. We'd go ahead and rent box 126. It'd be kind of foolish to pay that extra amount. It would be a waste. When we come into creating variables, we declare the data type because we want to try to conserve our random access memory as efficiently as possible. We don't want to waste memory by storing a very small value in a very large container. So if I want to store a Boolean value, and in C-sharp we refer to it as bool, that's either a true or false value. It only takes one byte of memory. So when I declare a variable as type bool, that's going to set aside one byte of random access memory. But if I need to store an integer, which is a whole number, or in C-sharp we refer to it as int, that's going to take four bytes to store that. I need a larger chunk of memory. And then if I want to store a decimal number with 16 digits, then I need a double value that takes eight bytes. I wouldn't declare an eight byte size of memory to contain just a Boolean value. I would actually be using eight times the amount of memory that I would need for, to, to hold that value. And so by using data types, we can make our memory management much more efficient. This chart shows the different data types for both Visual Basic and C Sharp and how they correspond. We'll work a lot with strings in here. Strings contain characters, a phrase, a word. It could just even be a single letter. If you know it's going to be just a single letter, though, you can save some space by declaring it as data type char. And then we have three different or four different types of whole number values based on the range and what we anticipate those numbers to be. So if it's a small number between 0 and 255, we can use a byte. That just takes one byte to store. We'll primarily work with integers in terms of whole numbers in this class. They take four bytes. And they have a range of a, of a positive to negative, roughly 2 billion. Suppose we need to contain a value, though, of about 5 trillion. Well, that wouldn't fit in an integer space of just four bytes. 
we would need to declare the data type as long. And then we have what in programs called floating points. These are decimal numbers. And on the VB side, they're single, double, and decimal based on how large a value that's going to be and how many significant digits we need. And similar thing on the C-sharp side, except on C-sharp, instead of single, we refer to it as float. We talked about the Booleans being either true or false. And then there's a date time container. On VB, we use date. And in C-sharp, it's a little bit roundabout way, but there's a date time as part of the .NET framework. And then we get into writing our own functions. On the C-sharp side, we'll have a data type called void, which means there is nothing there. It's, it's empty. And this is a return value. There isn't a corresponding void in VB. Instead, we differentiate between a function, which returns a value, and a subprocedure, which does not. So if it has a no return value or it's void, we use the keyword sub. If it returns one of the other values, we use the keyword function. We'll get into writing our own functions much later in the semester. If we want to assign a value to a, va to a variable that's already been declared or created, we simply give the variable name equals and whatever that new value is. Now, a variable can only contain one value at a time. So if we assign a value to a variable, what was in there before is gone. It's going to be replaced. It's the same way on the C-sharp side if we put a semicolon. Now, we need to make sure we use the same data type. So campus, which was a string variable that we declared earlier in this example, to assign it a value, I need to assign it a string value. So I put South Mountain in quotes. Pay grade was an int or an integer. I give it a whole number. And my house payment was a single value or a float value or maybe a double value. I can assign it a decimal number. In the bottom right hand corner there, you'll see though that I can't assign the string phrase $12 to pay rate if pay rate is expecting a numeric value. $12 is not numeric, it's a string value and I would get an error. So we have to be cognizant of our data types as we're working with variables and storing values in those variables. Now we can combine the declaration statement and the assignment statement into one statement. So on Visual Basic, it's dim, our variable name as data type, equals some value. This is sometimes referred to as initializing a variable. So I'm going to declare the variable and I'm immediately going to stick some default value into that variable. On the C-sharp side, it's the data type, the variable name, equals, and then that initial value, and a semicolon.